Good evening, ma'am. We welcome you for this FDP, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Please wait, ma'am. I will call the director, sir. Yes, yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Our research person has arrived, sir. Shall we start? Good evening all, Assalamu alaikum. Good evening sir. Yeah. We shall start till I sorry ma'am. Yeah. Good evening sir, how are you? Your your uh, your audio 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 is you had un unmute your audio. Your yeah, audio, ma'am. Uh, how are you? How are you, Doctor Kavita? How are you? 
Yes, I am very fine, sir. I am doing good. How are you, sir? I am fine. Glad to meet you again in this forum. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, and thanks for the opportunity, sir. Thank you. You are welcome. Yeah, let's go ahead, Dr. Sandal. Yes, sir. Good evening to all. On behalf of the management, principal, faculty members, and students of Dasim Bibi Abdul Qadir College for Women and Department of Computer Science. I welcome you all for attending the knowledgeable five day FTP on research challenges for beginners. Today is the second day of five days faculty development program and the topic is my research journey. Prayer. Prayer is simply talking to God like a friend and should be the easiest thing we do each day. May I now call upon Ms. J. Mohiba Banu third BSc computer science to invoke the blessings of the almighty. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wat tini wa zaytoon. Wat uri sinin. Wahadal baladil ameen. Laqad khalaqna al-insana fi ahsan taqweem. Thumma radadnahu wa asfala safileen. Illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu al-salihati falahum majrun gayru mamnoon. Fama yukazzibu ka ba'idu bid-deen. Alaysu Allahu bi ahkam al-hakimeen. In the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful, by the fig and the olive, and by Mount Sinai, and the secure city Makkah, we have certainly created man in the best of stature. Then we return him to the lowest of the low, except for those who be, believe and do righteous deeds, for they will have a reward uninterrupted. So what it causes you to deny the recompense is not Allah, the most just of judge. Surah 3 verses 1 to 8. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Thank you for all. Thank you, Mahfuba. Welcome the challenges. Look for the opportunities in every situation to learn and grow in wisdom. May I now call upon Dr. P. Sendil Kumari, head in charge, Department of Computer Science, to welcome the gathering. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Tillai. A pleasant good evening and a warm welcome to one and all who present here. I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose welcome address on this second day FDP. On behalf of management, principal ma'am and director sir, I would like to welcome you all for second day FDP program on my research journey in software engineering domain. According to all in Turing, a computer would deserve to be called intelligent if it could deceive a human into believing that it was human. So it is in the hands of software engineering people like you, ma'am, to change the computer to behave like a human being. I would like to welcome our resource person, Dr. R.K. Kavita, assistant professor, senior grade, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Kumaraguru College of Technology, Coimbatore. I welcome you, ma'am, for this FDP program. Her educational qualifications are BSc Physics from Vellala College for Women, Erod, MCA from Gopi Arts and Science College, Gobi Chetty Palayam, PhD in Science and Humanities Computer Application from Anna University, Chennai. She has 21 years of academic experience in teaching. She has expertise in the domain of software engineering, knowledge management, and educational data mining. She serves as an ed editorial board member for the international journal Asian Social Science from 2015. She published research papers in various international conferences and reputed journals. She has Google Scholar citations with Hatch Index 4, ITIN Index 3, and Citations 96. She has awarded NPTEL Discipline Star Award in Computer Science during December 2019. 
last but but not least i would like to welcome all faculty members from various institutions i welcome you one and all who present here over to mrs tileshwari thank you ma'am it's my pleasure and privilege to welcome dr m s irfan agamat director sir research and industry institute relations to deliver the keynote address for you sir assalam alaikum good evening i am really today i'm very happy uh, uh, joining uh, the head of the department in welcoming my favorite students uh, dr kavita uh, i think you people are uh, coined the word like my research journey right uh, i think she is a, a right person to tell what is her research journey because she hails from a background uh, a rural area then uh, she took up lot of challenges in her research then i still i remember how she came up with the topic at that time the topic was not known to everybody and it was a challenging topic what she took and at that time i was also half baked at that particular topic so she told me okay, we will have we work together then we start the the thing she a lot of changes lot of a lot of challenges lot of pains uh, sometimes when she came and meet me i i can see her face uh, sometimes she will lost in hope and other things and she was fighting back and she got it and now she has come to a level that uh, college a uh, uh, college where she is working uh, recognizing her in a great way i am very much happy I think we had a journey of around 15 years. Am I right, Kavita? When you completed, we had association of for the past 15 years. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, she's my favorite student. Uh, it's not a. It's it's not at all. See, when she when she completed, it is not like a student or this one. It is a family uh, bond. What we had. I uh, really happy that she is there with you. i think if you follow her uh, way of uh, approach and other things the challenges i think most of you people can complete the phd in a right way hope she will deliver a very good uh, uh, deliverable to you people uh, any of all the best uh, the god bless you i always in my prayers always some very few people i will remember in my prayers there is kavita is also one of my that all the best god bless you i can go ahead thank you thank you Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Next, I would like to welcome our resourceful resource person, Dr. R. K. Kavita, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science, Kumaraguru College of Technology, <coughs> came to to take over the session. Over to you, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. Uh, so let me share my screen. Uh, ma'am, is my screen visible, ma'am? The PPT. Ah, yes, yes ma'am. Ma uh, thank you. Uh, let me start. Uh, so, uh, since uh, Irfan sir uh, told me to share about uh, my uh, research journey, so uh, I am going to share uh, how I started with the problem, a uh, broad area, then how I narrow down the problem, and uh, I'll share you some of the tips how to. Uh, uh proceed with uh, the various phases of research and later uh, i'll also give an outline of uh, my uh, research work so that uh, uh, if you are interested in it uh, you can start exploring but uh, however i have completed my phd uh, four or five years back uh, so few things uh, it may see look uh, like outdated but uh you but nowadays uh, the technologies there may be uh, small changes in the technologies so you can also uh, think about it and you can uh, add it so my agenda goes like this uh, so initially i am going to uh, discuss about uh, the research stages of my, my work uh, then i am going to discuss about uh, the uh, work uh, of my that is a part of my uh, research work and finally i'll give you the summary and conclusions 
so uh, initially uh, i have uh, taught the subject software engineering for few years uh, to uh, the post graduate students and uh, how the spark came in my mind about this topic is i i attended a workshop on agile software development methodologies before even before starting my research at phd college of technology and it was i think it was handled by uh, thoughtworks a company called thoughtworks uh, so uh, they were discussing about the agile software methodologies uh, then extreme programming and they introduced me the terms like pair programming etc so uh, i i i i i was very much interested in uh, those topics and i thought uh, why can't we uh, pursue uh, the research in this particular topic uh, so i i started um, uh, uh, going through the literature on that uh, particular topic okay so my broad area it was software engineering and later i uh, did a lot of uh, literature review and uh, i started with uh, some a few base papers and lot of papers were available and lot of research uh, was uh, uh, going on in uh, uh, other countries but uh, only few papers uh, i could found uh, from india okay uh, and after that i uh, had some uh, discussions with uh, a few experts and uh, my colleagues uh, and finally i narrowed down uh, the broad area software engineering to agile software development and in that uh, uh, exactly the extreme programming and uh, pair programming okay and apart from it uh, i am also interested in knowledge management uh, and um, one of my uh, colleagues uh, she was pers pursuing her uh, research in knowledge management so uh, she also gave uh, gave me few points uh, uh, and few ideas so i thought of combining this agile software development and knowledge management Uh, and uh, uh, develop my research problem okay then uh, so later i started i did looking for um, a good suitable uh, research guide and i was very lucky to have uh, dr irfan ahmed as my uh, guide and mentor uh, and i registered for phd in anna university and also uh, there is uh, i i started to identify some industry experts and uh, industry people whom with which i can interact because my Uh, area is software development uh, normally we teach software engineering but actually uh, the companies most of the companies who practice that uh, they who put into uh, actual practice i wanted to meet those persons and i uh, so uh, i just started uh, um, interacting with a uh, few of my seniors and teachers and uh, i started uh, uh, getting some contacts um, then later uh, another uh, important thing is uh, i applied for uh, uh, funding okay so after formulating the problem and all and after registering uh, with the anna university i started to uh, apply for funding uh, uh, since i was uh, uh, doing just uh, have registered my phd i was uh, not able to put my name as uh, uh, a principal investigator so uh, i discussed with my uh, then hod dr muthu kumar and uh, uh, he uh, was uh, nominated as the principal investigator and uh, i was a a uh, co-investigator for that uh, particular uh, proposal and uh, we applied and it got selected um, the topic was pair programming in learning environments i think uh, 3 lakhs was uh, sanctioned but the thing is uh, uh, since uh, dr muthu kumar left the institution uh, due to some reasons uh, so i was not able to uh, complete the uh, funding uh, proposal okay so uh, it was left half way uh, but however uh, i uh, started uh, continuing it uh, uh, and uh, i started to um, uh, make use it uh, the the results uh, uh, i used it for my research and uh, after that uh, i started to look for uh, good conferences where i can uh, start publishing okay so to start with uh, you can uh, publish a small uh, at a smaller level papers in conferences then later you can uh, go for journal publications so initially uh, the initial ideas and sometimes you can also um, go for a survey paper where uh, you can uh, uh, combine you can study all the literature you can combine uh, those ideas and you can uh, Uh, develop a survey paper and present in a conference and uh, sometimes even a standard conferences you can choose like ieee conference uh, so that uh, when um, it appears these papers appears in the proceedings uh, it will be of uh, little bit worth and uh, you can get good citations so uh, start with uh, standard conferences 
uh, especially national or international conferences. So I started um, with the conference publication initially so that uh, um, while presenting the uh, panel members, they gave me a lot of inputs and it was very useful for me to uh, proceed further. Then uh, later uh, I started the selection of research design. Uh, then uh, with whom, uh, from whom I have to collect the data and what techniques I have to use for collecting the data. So those things I finalized and uh, I started with the data collection and experimentation. So for that, uh, uh, the main uh, uh, source of data uh, were my, the, my uh, students uh, in KCT. So uh, I collected data from them. Uh, and uh, I also developed few uh, software interfaces where uh, the students uh, can um, uh, enter data and uh, for various other purposes, uh, uh, small uh, softwares were developed. And these softwares uh, actually uh, I gave it as a student project okay, because they are all uh, small softwares only. So uh, for MCA, since they are PG students, uh, they have six months of uh, project work, main project work. So I started uh, giving it as a major project for my students and uh, they uh, try to develop some uh, softwares. Uh, and uh, uh, which was used for my research. OK, uh, and later for data processing and analysis, I use tools like SPSS, Rapid Miner and Rosetta. But nowadays we have a lot of tools like uh, uh, Python, Vika, etc. We can make use of it and similarly R can also be used for data processing and analysis nowadays. Um, and uh, uh, later uh, I started uh, to look for uh, quality journals uh, for publishing my papers. Um, initially, uh, I struggled a lot. I received a lot of comments. Uh, so in Anna University, we have to publish in unexpected journals, which are very standard and it takes uh, a lot of time to get the reviews. Uh, so uh, I received a lot of reviews which helped me to improve my work. So uh, uh, that is, uh, it took uh, some time for me to publish in standard journals. So you can also uh, look for quality journals so that uh, uh, your work will be a notable one. Your publication will be a notable one. Uh, then finally, uh, the synopsis and thesis submission and the VivaOS examination. So this is my actual uh, research journey, how I identified the problem, how I narrowed down, uh, how I started uh, planning my work, uh, what uh, type of tools uh, I used, uh, those things. Uh, so with this, um, I just uh, uh, give you an introduction about uh, my work. What are the terminologies I have used uh, in my work? Then later I'll discuss about the work. Um, so here, as I told you, uh, I started with knowledge management. Uh, so this is a technical definition which we all know. Uh, it includes uh, everything that is uh, uh, database, documents, policies, procedures, uh, etc. Uh, so we have to manage the data, we have to store the data somewhere and we have to look some look out for some means to share the data. OK, so that is uh, the knowledge management, which uh, the concept I have used in my uh, work. Uh, actually, uh, these two terms I wanted to uh, give an outline because uh, in most of the slides I, I might have used this uh, knowledge, tacit knowledge and all. So uh, knowledge usually can be classified into two types, uh, tacit and explicit. Uh, tacit knowledge is uh, the knowledge which resides on the human minds. OK, so uh, it's very difficult to formalize, OK, which is uh, present in our uh, heads, OK, which we only know that is called as the tacit knowledge, OK? Whereas explicit knowledge is the knowledge which is which can be codified. That is in the form of some documents, records, emails. OK, and even this PPT, you can call it as an explicit knowledge because uh, I can share it with you all. Whereas uh, the uh, session which I handle, it is it's like a tacit knowledge where I am sharing whatever I know to you. OK, uh, so this is the categories of uh, knowledge and um, uh, next, I identified what is the need for sharing knowledge. OK, uh, so here uh, because uh, the knowledge should be shared uh, for various uh, reasons. One is uh, if the knowledge is not shared among the individuals, uh, the knowledge will uh, remain or it will hoarded by a single person. It will not be known to others. Uh, and also if we share knowledge, we can get better solutions. Uh, and also it will increase the bond and connection between the professionals and also by sharing knowledge we can reuse it. OK, so 
uh, that's also uh, the main intention of sharing knowledge uh, and also if we share uh, knowledge sometimes uh, we can learn from the mistakes of others okay if i say uh, so don't do this uh, so uh, you can uh, learn from this and you will not be doing the same mistake which i did so by sharing knowledge uh, uh, we can uh, have lot of advantages which uh, just i listed okay uh, and this is another important term you have to know because uh, most of the uh, that is uh, i think uh, uh, three of my work uh, it's concerned with pair programming as i told it is an agile software development methodology covered under extreme programming so extreme programming is one of the agile software development methodology and in that um, uh, pair programming is a uh, part okay so uh, in industries uh, uh, early uh, there is a, i think it became popular in uh, 2000 2005 and all earlier in uh, foreign countries Uh, and in most of the industries uh, they started using this pair programming uh, for various reasons i'll tell the reasons in the next slide and before that uh, in pair programming we have uh, there is uh, two roles of programmers okay so it's concerned with programming normally what uh, how we program is the same thing but here two people will work on a single task okay so there will be only one uh, monitor and keyboard uh, and two people will be sharing uh, Uh, the same system and they'll be working on a single task okay so uh, uh, the roles of the two persons are like this one is the driver and other is the navigator so driver will uh, type and write down uh, and uh, he will um, write the code and uh, sometimes if navigator asks some doubts he'll be explaining and uh, both the driver and navigator will uh, brainstorm on uh, the solution etc whereas the navigator you can see in this picture this person is the navigator and this person is the driver who controls the keyboard and mouse okay so now na navigator what he does is uh, he'll watch for uh, the code okay so if there is any any error or uh, any defect in the code it will be immediately uh, notified uh, to the driver okay and also he will uh, question the driver why you are writing the code like this what's the reason and uh, brainstorming will happen between the two okay so both the driver and navigator will be collectively responsible for the outcome okay so uh, with this introduction to pair programming so let us go uh, to the next topic that is how knowledge management is achieved through pair programming so i have told you what is knowledge management and i have told you what is pair programming so how this knowledge is managed uh, while uh, uh, people uh, do this pair programming Uh, so by uh, switching the roles between the right driver and navigator but is that is for short period of time the driver will have the control of the keyboard and mouse and he'll be doing the code and after some time a uh, navigator will uh, act as driver and driver will act as navigator they'll switch roles okay so by rotating the roles uh, it enables knowledge transfer okay so the knowledge will be transferred between the two persons okay so that uh, if one is strong in a uh, in coding or in a particular technology uh, the other person will learn along with him so in this way uh, the knowledge uh, will be transferred uh, between the programmers and in industries uh, uh, even nowadays this pair programming is used uh, mainly in training areas okay so for freshers uh, the industries will be providing some sort of training so where this pair programming will be used uh, that is one senior person will be uh, paired with a uh, new fresher uh, so uh, the fresher uh, will learn a lot from the expert or from the seniors so in this way pair programming is used in industries and even uh, in some projects for coding also they are using uh, pair programming okay and they have found this pair programming is a very successful and organized approach in industries and uh, uh, um, then uh, later i search for literature in how this pair programming can be applied in academic setting okay so a lot of papers i could found uh, a lot of papers uh, where uh, uh, i can see uh, that uh, this pair it offers a good promise a considerable promise as a learning strategy in academic environments and if usually we can see our students they they do uh, some sort of group study uh, then uh, they will uh, combinedly they will work on uh, if we make it as a practice okay or if we implement it as a strategy okay uh, so it give, give a good outcome 
when uh, compared to uh, individual programming. Okay, so a lot of papers uh, discussed about that, and they uh, they show the they yielded very positive and promising results. The papers. So I thought of uh, uh, proceeding with this uh, uh, academic perspective of of pair programming, and I thought of uh, doing some research in it. And uh, uh, why I started is uh, uh, I started with this uh, is. Uh, mostly uh, the students from different educational backgrounds, especially the students which I whom I teach, there is MCA students. They come from uh, different educational backgrounds, like the some uh, may have done UG, uh, some physics or chemistry or maths. Even some commerce students will be there, and uh, they'll be uh, uh, learning along with the computer science background students. Uh, so these some of the students will struggle initially. Uh, and also they, it took a lot of time for them to learn programming concepts. OK, uh, and also uh, another uh, thing is uh, about the average and slow learners. Uh, so those uh, type of category of learners also, they felt very difficult to uh, learn programming um, initially. OK, so for uh, these uh, type of students, there is average and slow learners and also students from different educational backgrounds. If uh, they practice pair programming, uh, so how will be the outcome? So I wanted to study this. So this this uh, this was my problem statement. And also uh, next stage is uh, we have to identify the gaps in the existing study. OK, as I told you from the literature, we'll be going through a lot of papers, isn't it? So uh, while uh, uh, while uh, going through a paper, first we have to go through the abstract part and the conclusion part. So once it uh, you feel that this paper is an apt paper for which is very much related to your uh, research idea, then you can go through the uh, other part like literature review, their experimentation and other things uh, you can go through. Uh, so while uh, uh, I uh, went through all these papers, I just noticed few gaps. OK, because uh, only if you identify the gaps, you can try to bring out a solution for those uh, problems or uh, you can fill those gaps. OK, so uh, what I identified was uh, at that time, that is four or five years back, only a few studies were done, especially in uh, Tamil Nadu also. Only very few I can I could see only one or two papers. Uh, so uh, and also in most of the papers, they uh, never used any uh, systematic uh, process. OK, so uh, not a, a systematic process was followed. OK, uh, so just like that, they uh, collected some data and uh, they uh, analyzed and published the result. Uh, a systematic methodology was not followed. So I thought of uh, going for a systematic methodology. And also uh, there is uh, there is agile since I was uh, working in the agile software development topic. Uh, so it has various uh, phases of software development. Uh, so I thought of uh, finding the effectiveness of this pair programming during various phases of agile software development. So that work was not done at the time. So I thought of uh, I thought it was a gap which I can address. OK. And also the earlier studies which was conducted uh, for a very short duration, maybe for few weeks uh, and for few days. But I thought of let me uh, do it for uh, an entire semester or uh, for different batches of students. OK, and I also thought of uh, using uh, some more sophisticated uh, data mining tools uh, to analyze my data because most of the work they used static uh, statistical analysis tools. So uh, in addition to that, I thought of using some uh, data mining tools uh, and in uh, other papers, uh, this negative aspects of pair programming, it was only uh, less discussed. So I also thought of analyzing what are the negative uh, side of pair programming. OK. So these were the perceived gaps which I identified and I thought of addressing uh, these points. OK, I, I, I just uh, kept in mind these points and I formulated the research statement, the research problem and uh, I started working on it. So whenever you start a work, uh, you have to identify the gaps in the existing study uh, and you have, you have, you can, so that you can try to address those gaps. Uh, so uh, uh, the objectives uh, it's listed like this. I thought of uh, uh, combining the knowledge management and agile software development. And since I wanted to make the work systematic one, okay, 
So I, I wanted to uh, develop a framework for uh, this pair programming process and I wanted to analyze and uh, come up with the results. OK, uh, and also uh, I wanted to relate uh, the students opinion on the various aspects of pair programming. OK, like even positive aspects or negative aspects, whatever it may be. And also I wanted to relate their opinion with their final exam scores. OK, we cannot stop with that. Yes, pair programming is useful uh, like that. We cannot stop. We have to also prove it. How? By looking at their exam scores, whether there is any improvement in their exam scores after uh, doing this pair programming. So that, that I wanted to confirm. OK, so with these objectives, I started with the work. Uh, so actually this is the uh, model of my study. I'll just give an outline later. We can go into the work. So initially the outer rectangle. I started with the knowledge management and agile software development teams. I started relating both. Then uh, I started identifying um, the tools for uh, tacit knowledge codification. Uh, like uh, what are the tacit knowledge enablers? I started identifying and uh, later uh, that that was my uh, uh, stage one. Uh, then in stage two, uh, I started to develop a pair programming process framework. As I told, uh, a systematic process framework. I started developing. I started. Uh, uh, there is. Uh, it's actually like a software interface uh, which we developed. Uh, and uh, next stage is we experimented the pair programming um, for two labs. Okay, we chose two different labs. One is the visual programming lab and the other one is the software development lab. Uh, so where uh, some uh, we, I actually uh, differentiated both the labs. I'll explain uh, while uh, um, in the later slides. OK, so uh, in two labs we started the experimentation and finally the, in the stage four, uh, uh, the inconsistent data was dealt with. We collected some data. So in that there may be some inconsistencies. So how to deal with the inconsistencies? That was my fourth work. OK, so final uh, expected outcome is enhanced student learning. So there should be uh, an improvement in the learning of the students. So uh, has it is it happened or not? So we have to test it. OK, so this was the uh, general uh, conceptual model. Uh, so before uh, starting the work, we can formulate some uh, model. Uh, then later we can proceed. Uh, so this is my uh, first uh, work, which is uh, uh, knowledge management for software development teams. So where uh, I identified what are the tacit knowledge enablers. So for that, uh, actually uh, we I actually contacted the industry experts from Bosch and Wipro, and we and actually I had some uh, discussions with them, uh, and uh, they uh, they expressed that. Uh, uh, the challenges for knowledge management in their industry. So actually they have their own tools, but um, they gave me some few outlines. OK, so with that I try to identify uh, what are the knowledge enablers. OK, uh, so what they from uh, their uh, discussions, what I identified was uh, the experts. They found a lot of time in repeatedly answering the same questions. OK, uh, so repeatedly answering. Uh, so again and again, if somebody asks the doubts, the experts, uh, uh, they have to spend some time in repeatedly answering the same question. Uh, so they <laughs> felt that. Uh, so uh, they uh, told that it's like a waste of time uh, answering the same type of questions. And also few members told that uh, um, they they were not able to remember the solution. So today I faced a problem. I uh, I found a solution, but after few days I'll forget what I did uh, earlier. So uh, if there is some uh, means to capture those uh, solution, okay. If there is some means to store uh, what I did to solve that particular problem, so I will be able to re refer even after a year or uh, two years. Uh, this, if I face the same solution, I'll be able to remember the solution. OK, so uh, that was uh, also uh, a problem stated by the industry experts and also uh, another common problem is once the experienced people, they move out of the organization. They uh, go for uh, some other job. The knowledge uh, there is especially the tacit knowledge which is stored in the individuals. It will be going moving along with the person. OK, so the knowledge is lost. 
OK, so if there is some means uh, for everyone to store their knowledge in some codified form, that is conversion of tacit knowledge to explicit knowledge. OK, so if we have some software or tools or whatever it may be uh, to store the knowledge then and there, so it will be of great use. OK, so these these were the points which I identified from the discussions. Uh, and similarly, if we uh, talk in an informal uh, way, so just oral communication, it cannot serve as a record. OK, so we cannot say uh, uh, it cannot serve as a record like uh, uh, something we write in a paper and uh, sign. OK, uh, so uh, that is also a point they stated and less support for reusability. If knowledge is not uh, stored somewhere, it cannot be reused. OK, so these were some of the points. So uh, I just uh, thought of these points and uh, I tried to develop a, a framework like this. OK, so uh, uh, here are three, three or four, uh, I think, uh, uh, a tacit knowledge enablers were identified. One is the idea map uh, where so these are small tools. OK, so where uh, the uh, students or the industry persons, uh, whenever they have some ideas, they can uh, enter in the form of a, a graphical uh, map OK, or a drawing and store it in a, a particular repository so that uh, even in the future they can uh, refer or somebody else can just log into this knowledge repository and they can uh, uh, view these things. OK, and similarly forums, uh, which is uh, uh, very, very popular nowadays in all sort of uh, environments. So uh, uh, this is also a good source of knowledge where a lot of discussions will be going on and if everything is stored properly, it will be of great, great help. And another thing is uh, another small idea is about an experience recorder where uh, whatever uh, problems we face or whatever hurdles or uh, whether it may be good or bad, it can be stored in some form, uh, type of uh, like audio or uh, video files or text files. Uh, we can uh, save our experiences so that um, we can record and save our experiences so that it may be used in future. And another uh, good one is the FAQs. OK, questions and answers. It can be also stored. So these four uh, uh, things I, I have identified and finally it can be stored in a knowledge repository. OK, so this idea I uh, actually published in an IEEE conference and I got good citations for this paper also. Um, so this is the uh, initial idea and uh, this is the software uh, developed uh, by one of my uh, PG student as her project work. Uh, so here um, I, I think uh, it's developed in PHP MySQL. Uh, so where the students can just log in and they can uh, post their FAQs and post their experiences uh, and everything and other students can also log in and uh, view others experiences and all. So uh, this will be a permanent storage like uh, so people can access from anywhere at any time. OK. Uh, here uh, after this, uh, after developing these tools, I wanted to uh, also test this with my postgraduate students. Uh, so uh, uh, initially I gave them a presentation because the students were not uh, familiarized, uh, familiar the, with the pair programming and other knowledge management concepts. So I gave a presentation to them and uh, uh, this collaboration tools were uh, made use of in the laboratory particular uh, laboratory course, I think. Uh, and uh, I collected some data from them. Uh, for that, I used the survey technique. I designed a questionnaire and uh, I uh, shared with the students and uh, the uh, response responses were analyzed. OK, so these were uh, some of the results. Uh, actually, the main results I have uh, included in this uh, PPT. Uh, and here uh, uh, you can see uh, the better use of existing ideas. It has a very good uh, score given by the students. So students felt that uh, by using such knowledge management tools, um, that is uh, they can make use of the existing ideas which were posted by uh, somebody else. So this was uh, uh, received a very good rating and later uh, uh, students have also felt that uh, time saving that is uh, by uh, say storing our knowledge uh, somewhere in some form. Uh, it's of, uh, uh, it saves a time a lot because we need not uh, uh, spend again uh, to invent reinvent the same wheel. OK, we can just uh, refer to the uh, database and uh, we can uh, know what whatever we want. 
okay and also uh, there were some issues uh, felt by the students okay so a uh, main issue was uh, students felt that uh, this consume lot of time because they have to every time they have to uh, type something or post something uh, into the repository so uh, since it was like a compulsion for them in the particular laboratory they felt that ma'am uh, it was a double work for us uh, so it consumed lot of time so that was the main uh, drawback and another uh, main uh, second uh, drawback was which the student felt was uh, some students were unwilling to share knowledge so, so they want to retain whatever they know they never wanted to share it with somebody okay so that was also uh, an issue which was uh, identified okay so both uh, the positive and negative side also uh, uh, it was a survey uh, and out of this four proposed to uh, the uh, experience recorder it was found very useful by the students when compared to idea map and forums etc okay uh, so this was my uh, first work Okay, so I developed, I identified the tacit knowledge enablers, and I identified, developed the framework, and I also tested with the students, uh, asking them which they felt better, uh, what are the positive aspects, and what are the drawbacks of the particular uh, uh, environment. Okay, this is a uh, um, knowledge uh, capturing uh, tools, so which they like and which they don't like, and why. So these things uh, 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 I actually researched, and uh, next comes my second work. Uh, where uh, the heading is like this that is knowledge sharing through pair programming in learning environment so here comes the pair programming concept okay so the first work it dealt with knowledge management uh, and uh, second work uh, i introduced the pair programming concept in learning environments uh, so here uh, i formulated uh, actually i tried identifying uh, some of the variables okay uh, so uh, by uh, start going through the literature in depth uh i i uh, explored various uh, uh um, that is um, uh experiments uh, which were conducted in uh, inside and outside india uh, and i also found lot of uh, variables they uh, used in the study so uh, i st i also started exploring uh, um my own variables so what what i can choose only if we fix the variables then we can go over the questionnaire design the questionnaire and collect data Okay, so first thing is we have to fix what we want. Okay, what we want to study, uh, how should be our results. So only based upon that, uh, we can fix some variables. For example, here I have fixed a variable called perceived usefulness, usefulness of pair program. It is one of the variables, study variable. Then uh, another variable I have to fix this like adoption in future, whether uh, this pair programming will be adopted by students in future or not. So likewise, uh, I decided and ended up with a lot of study variables uh, and uh, later uh, I started uh, designing a questionnaire accordingly, according to the study variables. I segregated the questions into groups. Uh, then um, we started uh, that is and also uh, another uh, one of my uh, friend, good friend. Uh, she also helped me in uh, formulating the questionnaire. Um, so she is a uh, very experienced uh, formulated the objectives for example the first objective was uh, to test the association between Okay, so I started identify. I formulated these objectives, and then uh, later uh, here, what methodology I used to uh, uh, formulate uh, that is uh, to go with this uh, uh, work is uh, I used a survey te technique, uh, and uh, here again uh, some questionnaires were designed for this work. 
um uh, i i named it as entry questioner exit questioner worksheet uh, etc okay uh, so as by my as per uh, my work i i just uh, named like uh, like this uh, and uh, this entry and questioner questions okay five scale rating uh, uh, it was given whereas worksheet uh, it was like open ended questions okay uh, so where the students have to write the answers i last the question and they have to uh, type in uh, or they have to write the answers and submit okay so uh, i'll I, I, uh, both this entry exist and also the worksheet were taken for analysis okay uh, so this uh, in this uh, part of second work uh, it was uh, actually experimented in visual programming lab uh, with uh, mca students and here uh, i gave the choice of choosing the student pass okay uh, so the students can they themselves choose uh, their own partner okay uh, so no compulsion so who, whomever they are come they can choose uh, as pass and uh, the experimental setup was a controlled one where the faculty uh, myself and another uh, person was also there uh, we were uh, present there and explained and helped the students uh, whenever they have some doubts related to the experiment okay and uh, and the students were also uh, asked to interchange their roles uh, as driver and navigator roles the students were interchanging and for uh, capturing this worksheet entry exit questionnaire and other things uh, we designed the path programming process framework so which is uh, shown in this uh, slide i'll just give you give an overview um so here uh, initially uh, before starting the experiment uh, the awareness was created for the students okay because they don't know what is uh, the intent of the study uh, so we gave a presentation then the students formed a formed pass among themselves on their own choice then uh, tasks were identified what type of uh, tasks uh, they should uh, proceed with so it was identified then the student uh, started practicing uh, the pair programming during the laboratory sessions uh, so here uh, again the first work the continuation of the first work whether is uh, was taken up that is uh, students were recording their experiences then faq similarly lessons learned everything was uh, 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 recorded and it was stored in a repository okay so here knowledge management comes in uh, okay so whatever they do they they have to record at the end of the lab session and uh, this uh, pair programming information system it was also another uh, tool which we developed Uh, where uh, the students can automatically log in and the questioners will be displayed entry exit questioners worksheets etc so they can just log in uh, to the system information system and they can enter the uh, details okay when our they finish work they can so okay so assessors the other teachers they can just log into the system and they can view the responses given by the students they can download the responses in excel sheet and the excel sheet can be directly fed into the tool okay maybe a data mining tool or spss we can directly download the excel sheet. we can feed it okay so this was the plan uh, and also some assessments were also carried out to check whether the students have uh, gained something out of this pair programming okay so this was uh, the framework and the last uh, the uh, uh, things that is given in this uh, box at the bottom they are the outcomes okay so i wanted to check whether knowledge sharing has happened and yeah. similarly what about the debugging whether they felt easy or not when they uh, pair program and what are the student perceptions on this pair programming and how they learned the tool the highest rating which is knowledge sharing since so i have said that uh, knowledge sharing has happened during the pair programming sessions okay so likewise we can conclude from uh, the highest scores and lowest scores and we can we have to justify why uh, it has happened why the students have given a low rating and those aspects also we have discuss uh, and we have to consider in our uh, research okay 
okay and similarly negative aspects were also uh, study uh, as i told uh, which was not done in the earlier work uh, so here you can see uh, the negative aspects uh, the contradiction and solution in solution uh, it tops okay because uh, as a pair while working as a pair i may uh, tell one solution and another uh, person may come up with another solution so both of them may contradict okay so uh, uh, students felt that uh, so there were a lot of contradiction and say their solution so that was a negative aspect uh, of uh, pair programming and uh, this is a worksheet data which i collected Just like this, like total debugging time while uh, pair programming. Uh, so, what is the time took for debugging? Okay, uh, normally we can assume that since there is a when we work as a solo programming or when we undergo solo programming, uh, automatically our debugging time will be more because we have to do it individually. But as a pair, when we work, uh, the we have uh, another one uh, who can lend a helping hand. Okay, so automatically our debugging time will be less. so likewise uh, i also analyzed how many how much uh, how many conversation has taken place between the past then uh, 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 frequency of uh, problem related conversation and uh, total conversations means uh, it includes also another thing ha had you have your lunch and how was the day so not such conversations uh, the related problem related or the experiment related conversations they have they have to enter how many conversations uh, have uh, taken place between the past and um, uh, similarly i have also analyzed several other factor like uh, extent of knowledge shared how much knowledge they have shared how much knowledge they have gained even it is not measurable but um, at least to a, some extent as a percentage they can uh, mention okay so i have shared around 20 percentage of knowledge so like when uh, they entered uh, and this worksheet data was also analyzed and uh, so these are a uh, few experimentation results Uh, so where i studied the correlation between the variables whether that is any relationship uh, between uh, the uh, variables uh, what is a positively correlated one or negatively correlated one or uh, there is no correlation so uh, we started analyzing uh, these things okay uh, and also uh, with the uh, between variables uh, whether uh, there is any association or relationship between the variables that is oh, if one so variable uh increases uh, uh whether uh, the other variable also the value of other variable also increases or not whether uh, there is any relationship between uh, uh the variables so these things also uh, uh, uh i uh, just uh, 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 took care of these things and hypothesis was formulated uh, and the hypothesis was also tested okay so whether uh, a null hypothesis can be accepted or what so these things were uh, also done and uh, also uh, some data mining concepts were also uh, used uh, in the work like uh, association rules uh, were also discovered uh, uh, by uh, analyzing the ratings given by the students for different parameters or variables okay i told you know i, I identified some variables so for those variables uh, what what is the what is the association okay some rules can be generated uh, maybe if you have uh, learned uh, data mining and all you might have uh, uh, known the uh, a priori association rules and all so um, so those things were also tested and some uh, rules were also generated okay so this was uh, done using rapid mining tool uh, and uh, also uh, as i told uh, finally the student uh, performances were also assessed in the during the model exams and final examinations end semester examinations the marks were captured and uh, it was also assessed and here uh, it clearly we can understand that uh, uh, during there is in the lower ranges 50 to 60 61 to 70 uh, is the dark gray shade so it was high but uh, when the mark range increases you can see uh, uh, 81 to 90 and all the pair programming score uh, it's high the students who have worked in pairs in the regular lab exercises they have scored a good mark during the end semester examinations where they worked individually okay during the examinations uh, individual uh, systems will be given and they will be working solo So I say.
to 90 range a uh, lot of students uh, had a good score from this we can understand that the uh, lower range of marks the students who worked as solo earlier okay even their scores were less uh, but now uh, since after uh, programming in pass a lot of knowledge was shared a lot of knowledge was gained okay uh, so uh, uh, an improved learning has taken place so that they were able to score good marks so this was this was my uh, second work uh, and the conclusion is uh, pair programming it works well um, uh, with uh, tools okay with good user interface that is uh, if in some of the uh, laboratories they need to um, learn on their own the software tools will not be taught from the scratch during the uh, classes uh, they have to learn on their own isn't it so in those areas when we uh, use this pair programming it was it was very very helpful the students were able to quickly learn the programming uh, concepts and also the tools they were able to learn so this was uh, the summary of this uh, second work and uh, third work is about pair programming for software engineering education uh, so where as i told uh, i have uh, uh, taken the different phases of uh, agile uh, where uh, there is a pair formation was done automatic by the software itself that is the uh, framework itself based on the cgp pairs okay so here uh, automatically based upon the cgpa the students were examinations like level 1 means uh, 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 there is very bright students and level 2 uh, students and level 3 average level 4 below average so likewise uh, some uh, level of students were formed and um, the uh, pair programming information system it automatically it paired okay that is one uh, uh, level 1 student was paired with one level level 3 or level 1 will paired with level 4 so likewise randomly uh, pairs were formed okay Uh, so that was the difference between my previous work and this work um ma'am sorry i lost my connection uh, am i audible yes ma'am yes, you ma are audible. okay i'll just share screen again sorry sorry for the inconvenience uh is my slide visible ma'am No, no ma'am. Okay, I'll share once again. No ma'am. No. No ma'am. No ma'am. Yeah, it is okay. No ma'am. Is it visible now, sir? Yeah, it's visible. Yes, it's visible. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. It is visible. Okay. Just go for a bit presentation board. It is very small. Just go for it. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let me continue. Uh, so here uh, the same uh, pair programming. Small, it, is, uh, it, it is small. Is it? It's very small. Just give the full screen. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, it's actually in full screen only. Maybe uh, there may be a network lag. Now it is. Now it is clear. Now it is clear. Now it is clear. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now it is okay. 
Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, so uh, the same uh, framework, uh, but uh, with uh, minor uh, variations here was uh, used. Uh, as I told you, uh, here the paths were automatically uh, formed by this uh, uh, framework uh, itself. Okay, uh, so that's why uh, here the data uh, creator, uh, uh, it was a separate module where uh, we have the assessor and the participants and this uh, uh, framework itself, it will form the pairs. Okay, and also the uh, this final uh, outcomes uh, may maybe all also different when compared to the previous work. Uh, and here, what I did is uh, uh, 18 software application uh, development projects were chosen and all with equal levels of difficulty. Okay, uh, so we chose the topics and uh, the difficulty levels was uh, same or more or less equal. Uh, and uh, it was this experiment was executed uh, uh, for uh, during separate lab sessions, uh, the duration of five hours per week. And uh, as I told, the students were grouped into four levels based on their CGPA, and the paths were automatically formed. And here, what happened is uh, the same. Uh, the class was uh, divided, okay, into uh, students. Uh, 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 who do per pair par programming and also few students they did solo programming. They worked individually. So, for example, uh, 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 for a, uh, an app development project or uh, like uh, student information system, if I have a project title, the same project title was allocated to pairs and also solo. The same project. OK, so finally we can compare the outcome. If the, in, if it is, if the project is carried out uh, as an individual, how uh, the project outcome will be. And if the pro, uh, project is done as pass, how the outcome will be. So both can be uh, compared. OK, so that also a variation here, which I uh, did. So this this was the experiment actually uh, in uh, uh, agile software development. Uh, here, these are the four phases. Uh, inception, elaboration, construction, and transition. Uh, so for uh, these four phases, uh, I identified a few artifacts with which I can assess because I have to here assess both the solo Okay. I assess this lines of lines of code. How many lines of code uh, they developed, and readability of the code, complexity, understandability. So all these factors, parameters, um, uh, were assessed. And similarly, in transition phase, it's like testing and implementation, where uh, uh, we looked into the test cases, test plan, uh, etc., and test results. OK, and finally, uh, 10 marks were given for their project execution. They were asked to sh uh, show a demo, complete demo, and also Viva was conducted because we have to assess the students, OK, both the pair programmers and solo programmers. Uh, so we also looked into alternative thinking that is out of box thinking, how differently they have approached the problem. So all this uh, were uh, taken into consideration and evaluated. Uh, so here also, uh, uh, we also uh, there is studied the correlation between the variables. OK, the variables were identified and correlation was formed. And we can see from this results that uh, there is a good uh, correlation. There is 5.598 between the variable pair support and reduced error. So uh, we can understand that while working as a pairs, uh, the uh, final uh, there is number of errors we get will be less. OK, because the navigator then and there uh, will be telling the errors to the uh, driver and the driver will be correcting the errors then and there. OK, they need not wait till uh, the final testing phase. OK, so uh, from this we can clearly understand that uh, uh, while doing pair programming, the automatically the number of errors will be reduced. OK, and similarly, the other uh, highest score is this 0.591 between the level of awareness and collaborative skills. 
Okay, so likewise we can see which variables are highly correlated and we can see some of the variables are negatively correlated. We can see the negative sign. Okay, levels of awareness and proactive learning. So they are not, not at all correlated. So likewise also we can uh, analyze. Okay, uh, so here also some hypothesis was formulated and the hypothesis was tested. Okay, uh, so whether the null hypothesis can be accepted or the alternate uh, hypothesis can be accepted. OK, uh, and uh, as I told you here, the same project, a similar project was given to both pairs and solos. So I also compared their scores. OK, final scores, it was taken into comparison. That is uh, in the slide I have to told how I subdivided the evaluation into 50 marks. So I took that mark and uh, you can see clearly see here in the graph, uh, this maroon uh, it represents solo and blue it represents pair. So here you can see mostly the pair scores were higher. OK, and uh, in very few uh, uh, points this uh, you can see this one 42 where the solo score is higher uh, due to some reasons. Maybe the student may belong to level one. OK, with the higher CGPA, so automatically he may be a brilliant student. He may be uh, uh, who may he may be able to do the project well uh, even as a uh, solo programming. OK, so those may be the reason. So we also analyzed why that particular student score was high and why a particular student score was less. So uh, uh, the analysis was also done. So uh, these uh, these were the uh, phase wise uh, uh, mean values. Uh, we can see that uh, the mean values are uh, higher in all the phases uh, for par when compared to solo in inception. The schools. Pair, pair score is uh, higher than solo and similarly elaboration also pair score is higher and construction also pair score is higher. Whereas in uh, transition you can see a, a good difference. OK, again uh, pair score is higher. So mostly uh, the pair scores uh, are higher uh, in all the phase. Uh, so the final uh, thing which we uh, um, understand is uh, during the various phases, the, among the four phases, uh, in the elaboration phase, okay, the students have uh, got a good score. That is, they have given a good uh, rating for elaboration score phase, uh, where they felt that uh, that is uh, during design phase, if they work as pass, they were able to come out with a good software design, um, which can be later converted as a uh, code. Okay. So uh, the pair programming was very effective during the elaboration phase of uh, the software development when compared to other phases like elaborate, so inception, construction and all. And uh, the rating for transition, that is the testing and implementation phase, it received a low score uh, because a student felt that uh, testing mostly they can be automated uh, using some tools and it can be even uh, done individually. OK, so no need uh, of uh, uh, compulsorily, uh, no need to do the pair programming during the testing phase and also the inception phase. So they felt that the students felt that during the construction and elaboration phase, that is during the design and coding phases, uh, the pair programming was very much effective when compared to the other two phases. So that was the conclusion which we got out of this uh, particular study. Um, and also here also the performance in final examinations were compared and uh, uh, again in this work also we can see that uh, the pair scores uh, were very much uh, good when compared to the solo programmers. That is uh, even in the final exam they worked as individuals, but the students who worked in uh, as pass and regular uh, laboratory sessions, they were able to uh, improve, showed an improved performance in the examinations. So that was the thing we uh, understood. Uh, and also students, uh, they enjoyed this part programming and they were very much satisfied with this part programming. So those uh, things we uh, just uh, presented as our results. Um, and uh, final, uh, so th th that was uh, about the third work uh, for my thesis. And fourth work is um, uh, generating classification rules uh, uh, by applying rough set theory. Uh, it's like, um, uh, that is during the data collection, uh, some of the students, uh, I observed that uh, some of the students have given casual ratings. So if I ask them to rate for different parameters, so what 
have done so what you, you, you have gained uh, how much knowledge you have shared and all few students uh, they have given casual readings out of compulsion since they sometimes they may not uh, show interest in participating in this experiments and those students they gave a casual reading just like that they clicked a, a three or four or something okay so uh, i also tried to uh, um, and that is uh, interpret those casual uh, responses okay uh, so how to identify those casual responses and how to uh, 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 go that is how they, even the same scores for all the parameters like usefulness productivity and all since it is a five scale rating they have given uh, four uh, five and all for all the parameters but uh, during the final examination this s3 has scored a a grade and s6 has scored s grade okay so here s grade is the highest grade as per our institution so uh, the student who have given the same rating for all the variable okay so they have uh, displayed a different grade in their final examinations so this uh, shows that one student may given a casual rating uh, because of which his uh, final grade uh, uh, is lesser okay so uh, we try to identify such inconsistent data and uh, um, using this uh, uh, rough set uh, based uh, rule evaluation uh, where the data set it was uh, reduced Uh, into uh, some uh, redux okay that is uh, its redux is a subset uh, of the data set uh, using which uh, we can uh, achieve some uh, 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 rules okay so redux well, uh, the tool automatically helps you to generate these rules um, so here you can see that few uh, sample rules i have included in this slide uh, so here for example i'll take अर्जुन फोन कर रहा है नेट पर मार्किंग कर रहा है मोबाइल देखा है और अंदर रहा है नो इंटरनेट नहीं बढ़ गया ओन योर
Ma'am, is this session is over? No, ma'am. The resource person lost the connection. I think. Okay, ma'am. Okay, sorry. Uh, again, I lost my net. I just connected using my mobile data, mobile data. So, am I audible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am, audible. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma I'll share my screen again. So, is it visible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Now it is visible, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, it's visible. So I'll just go to the slideshow more. Uh, so uh, I was discussing about the uh, rough set based uh, rule generation. Uh, the, so these are some of the sample rules generated. So from this, we can understand that a student who have given a rating between uh, four uh, and five for productivity and uh, four and five for knowledge improvement and uh, four uh, there is uh, any value to up to four for work quality may score the grade as yes or b so likewise uh, the rules are automatically uh, generated for the uh, data set and uh, also another thing is uh, we can uh, predict the grades that is the data set can be divided into test data set and um, there is training data set and the classifier can be trained and whenever uh, a student uh, that is a new entry uh, comes okay for a, whenever a student enters or gives the rating for these parameters um, as four or five or something we can predict the grade of the student okay what is the grade the student can score in the final examination if he gives a rating like this for the parameters productivity knowledge improvement etc so the prediction uh, was uh, all can also be done uh, so here uh, actually this is this this is the predicted results for the data set and uh, the classifier accuracy here i obtained is about uh, 0.77 77 uh, percentage of uh, accuracy uh, was got in this uh, particular uh, uh, classifier okay uh, so this this was my uh, fourth work okay uh, so here uh, in the fourth work, I just started to look for the inconsistency in the data. That is casual entries of uh, uh, values uh, for the variables by the students. And uh, I look for the, look for the rule generation uh, to uh, look at the uncertainties. How many students have given uh, casual ratings and all. Uh, and uh, what is the use of uh, 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 identifying this um, inconsistent data is uh, it helps the faculty or the teacher to monitor the students okay so as i told uh, as i uh, uh, displayed in the slide okay so here you can see that uh, two of the students uh, have given um, cash flow rating isn't it uh, that is uh, same rating but different scores to you can the teacher can identify such students and they can um, just uh, uh, give uh, that is they can pay more attention to such students OK, so whether uh, they have given casual rating or not. So this S3 student uh, can uh, uh, can be given more attention. OK, so we can identify such students who are given casual ratings and we can uh, give a more extra care to those students. OK, uh, so that's the intention of uh, identifying this. Um, so this is about my fourth work. Uh, and after uh, with this, uh, the thesis will not be complete. And finally, we have to go for a results and discussion section where we have to compare our work uh, with the previous uh, works already done. So uh, here you can see that uh, uh, the first work where uh, the knowledge management uh, uh, framework was developed, isn't it? Uh, by identifying the knowledge enablers. OK, so here uh, uh, the literature showed that there are already existing frameworks for capturing knowledge like uh, KEPSNet and ELE. 
so what i did is um, i compared uh, the findings okay or i gave my own findings um, for the framework which i have developed that is the first framework was k mask that is knowledge uh, management uh, uh, capturing uh, framework and the second is pair programming framework so these two frameworks uh, were my work uh, proposed so i compared with the work of uh, these two persons okay so you have to also give compare your findings with the already existing literature and you have to present what are the uh, uh, outcomes of your work okay and uh, here you can see that i have also presented another comparisons that is uh, between the scores of solo and uh, pair programmers uh, these uh, the first uh, uh, that is four uh, rows it shows the existing literature where the pair scores and solo scores were compared okay so from the first work you can see that the pair score is uh, pair graded average is 74 and solo is 67 so there is a significant difference between these two and similarly in another work by charlie et al you can see that the pair score is 84.7 and solo score is 84.6 in their experiment so there is no uh, major difference there is only 0.1 difference between the both the scores uh, and similarly in another work also uh, that's a minor difference is noticed 67 and 63 whereas uh, in my proposed work uh, in uh, visual programming uh, that is uh, while looking at the scores of the students in visual programming lab uh, a highly significant difference can be noticed that is between the pair graded average which is 82 and solo is 73 a good uh, difference uh, uh, can be noticed in this and also in the second work in the software development lab uh, so there is not uh, so much difference between the pair and solo when compared to the visual programming lab but however uh, there is a significant difference of scores okay so this like this you have to compare your work with the already uh, existing work okay and you have to prove uh, that that there is some improvement or betterment in your work so uh, the graphical uh, representation of another uh, conclusion there is a student willingness to adapt pair programming in future i uh, uh, just uh, compared it with uh, the previous three works uh, and in my work uh, you can see that uh, 33% of uh, the students are willing to adapt this pair programming in future laboratories whereas uh, the uh, uh, percentages are somewhat less uh, in the previous work okay and uh, this is the distribution of final examination scores i also i again i compared the scores uh, of my lab sessions that is a visual programming lab and uh, a software development lab so i made a comparison between the final examination scores of uh, these two laboratories and uh, here i could uh, see a significant difference okay so you can see that the scores of the students uh, uh, who uh, there is in visual programming lab is somewhat higher than the software development lab so this is a main important observation uh, of my research so here uh, i analyze the reason why uh, so in both the labs the students were allowed to pair program uh, so why there is a significant difference of scores okay so uh, later uh, i was able to conclude that uh, in uh, visual programming lab the students were given the freedom of choosing their pairs okay so they themselves uh, chose their pairs that is uh, whoever they are comfortable or their friends okay with the same level of knowledge so they they form form their their pairs whereas in software development lab as i told i segregated the students into four classes based on their cgpa and automatically pair pairs were formed okay so randomly the pairs were formed isn't it so uh, because of which the the there is a there is a difference a major di difference in the final exam scores uh, because uh, students uh, they felt uh, very um, um, that is uh, very easy to gel up with the pairs if they choose on their own okay whereas if we uh, randomly uh, ask them to pair and, and during some situations it didn't work out okay so it was a major con uh, conclusion or finding of this work okay um so this is my uh, conclusion so uh, totally i have done four work four uh, different works uh, so mostly the work should be related to each other 
okay so it should not be entirely different uh, so uh, the it, it ha that there should be some overlap or that there should be some continuity in the work okay so uh, you have to design your uh, research in such a manner okay so this was my uh, conclusion okay uh, so the final thing is uh, path programming was found to be effective in uh, the following environments that is in laboratories where students were allowed to work with new software having a good interface okay so in, in situations they have to learn on their own some of the programming or some of the tools they have to learn on their own but if the software is having a good user interface uh, this pair programming is very very effective and also pair programming was effective in the elaboration and construction phases of software development that is the design and coding phases of software development it was found to be more effective okay and uh, the third conclusion was uh, the uh, pair programming was uh, good okay the outcome was found to be good if the students were given the freedom of choosing their pairs okay so this was another a conclusion okay and the students also had a very good uh, experience out of this they felt very happy okay uh, and this experience will help them to prepare the students for their transit that is after the completion of their degree they need to work in an industrial setting where they have to work as teams okay so uh, we can prepare uh, the students in the during their education itself uh, how to work as teams uh, etc so it will help them to have a smooth transit a transit from uh, college to industry and uh, regarding the scope uh, what i uh, suggested was uh, it can be this uh, study can be extended to analyze the pair compatibility and styles okay so uh, you can uh, uh, choose uh, various ways of forming pairs and uh, various styles can be chosen you can just go through the literature there are uh, different styles of uh, 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 pairing the students okay so you can uh, try with that and also uh, the students can be uh, mixed up okay with the uh, based upon their knowledge levels uh, and also some groups can be formed uh, with four or six students and uh, within that particular group uh, pairs can be formed and uh, they can be asked to rotate the uh, pairs okay so after a particular duration of time so uh, you can also try with these experiments uh, and uh, you can study the outcomes and also uh, the impact of students background uh, can also be studied that is uh, whether uh, urban students they can uh, they, they are comfortable with pair programming or rural students are comfortable with pair programming in what are the various ways in which we can form the pairs um, and also this uh, study can be extended to an industrial setting okay so the framework which uh i have proposed can be also uh, applied in an industrial settings uh, with uh, some modifications suitable modifications so so that can be also uh, done and uh, nowadays uh, since uh, um, we are uh, working in a distributed environment uh, during this pandemic time uh, there is a concept called distributed pair programming where the instead of physically pair sitting uh, nearby and uh, working on a computer Uh, you can also try with the distributed pair programming where uh, the pairs or the students or the uh, employees they are not co-located they are not available in the same location they may be working in different locations or different countries so at the time how they can pair, uh, work as pairs okay so for that some tools or interfaces can be developed and uh, the results can be again analyzed um and a lot of uh, scope is there in educational data mining where uh, you can collect data from your own institution uh, you can formulate some questionnaire and you can collect some data and you can uh, analyze it because analytics it's a very uh, hot uh, field today uh, and uh, there is a separate uh, thing called learning analytics uh, where you can do lot of things because we have nowadays we have environment like ms teams and uh, uh, google meet or whatever it may be uh, or moodle okay so there lot of uh, data will be generated you can even study uh, how much time a student spends in those environments uh, if you give an assignment or if you post a ppt how much time they are spending uh, viewing that how many slides they have uh, gone through okay so how many uh, discussions or how many threads they have initiated okay so these things you can study okay so so that you can just uh, know about their uh, time of engagement in that particular environment 
learning environment so these things can be uh, studied and uh, analyzed uh, and it can be presented okay so these are uh, some of the scopes uh, which you can uh, start with in this particular field okay um, so these are my citations you can see that uh, the first this this was my first publication that is knowledge management framework for agile uh, software development teams it's an ieee conference publication uh, and it has received a good very good citation uh, so nowadays uh, for nac nb and all the citation count is also very very important and similarly nirf ranking and all so uh, uh, you can uh, try uh, to improve your citations in several means and one of the thing uh, i just noticed is the keywords so when people search for your research um, uh, your uh, paper uh, should appear uh, in the first few pages uh, of the google search so for that uh, you try to uh, 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 give the uh, keywords good keywords uh, in your uh, title or uh, in your abstract so that uh, those papers will uh, come and there are no those things to be cited okay so that's all about uh, my uh, research presentation Uh, so if you have any queries i am very happy to uh, answer ma'am uh, sandil kumari ma'am ma'am myself delay sorry ma'am ma'am myself ma'am myself ma'am myself ma'am myself i can hear some echo in the audio Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, it is very thank you, ma'am. Very informative session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ma'am, what I feel that the last one and a half hour we traveled with your uh, research work experience, ma'am, and also we got many ideas and uh, guidelines from your presentation. Thank you for your wonderful session, ma'am. Thank you. Now the time for question session. Participants, kindly ask your question. Good evening. Our post in chat. Yes. Good evening, ma'am. Ah, uh, good evening, ma'am. Ah, uh, today I have learned something new from your research journey, ma'am. Could you please tell how to estimate the cost in earlier design stage using agile model or any other model, ma'am? Because earlier design stage we couldn't predict the cost appropriately, ma'am. uh yes ma but for agile models uh, the cost estimation is somewhat different but i haven't uh, touched that topic um okay. uh, maybe uh, you can refer some sources okay so uh, in the earliest uh, there, there is a normal uh, traditional software we can use kokomo or uh, some other models yeah. uh, but for web development and in agile uh, software methods uh, there may be some improvised uh, models which may be used okay ma Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Participants, anybody? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, somebody is raising their hand. Ah, uh, Rajan, sir. Ma'am, whether you have developed any tools for evaluating the pair programming? uh no sir actually for the uh, data collection uh, we developed the framework and uh, I, as i told uh, the uh, data will be can be exported as excel and uh, using tools only we analyze the data so for the analyzing uh, we didn't uh, develop any uh, software uh, there is i actually used spss and um, uh, data mining tools uh, like rapid miner okay okay Now I would like to call Ms. N. Nagajodi, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science, to share the feedback of today's session.
good evening everyone before sharing uh, my feedback about this session i wish to convey my thanks to our director sir for choosing such a knowledgeable speaker for this uh, five day faculty development program thank you sir ma'am uh, really your uh, research journey is interesting informative and uh, useful for us from your uh, research journey we have gained valuable information for successfully completing our uh, research work your journey greatly expanded our understanding of research and gave us understanding of how it can be carried out in a right direction thank you so much ma'am thank you ma'am uh thank you thank you so much uh, and sorry for the inconvenience uh, caused in the middle due to some uh, uh, technical glitches uh thank you thank you very much thanks for the opportunity the thank roots you, of all goodness lie in the soil of appreciation for goodness i would like to call ms k anshila assistant professor department of computer science to propose the vote of thanks good evening everyone Mama, am I am I audible? Yes, yes, Anshila. Okay. On behalf of the Department of Computer Science, TPK College for Women, Kila Karai, I feel privileged and glad to propose vote of thanks in the second day of FTP on my resource journey. I take an immense pleasure in extending my sincere thanks to our principal, Dr. S. Sumaya, for her continuous support in all our activities. Next, I extend my sincere gratitude to Dr. M. S. Irfan Ahmed, Director, Research and Industry Institute Relations, who has been the driving force behind this whole process. I wholeheartedly thanks to Dr. P. Sundar Kumari, Head in Charge, Department of Computer Science, for her guidance and appreciation in all our academic matters. Thank you, ma'am. I am very much thankful to our today's resource person, Dr. R. K. Kavita, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Kumarakuru College of Technology, Coimbatore, for spending her valuable time with us and make all of us to know how to start research from scratch and also sharing her research experience. Thank you, ma'am. I am unable to express my thanks to our department. Happy to express my th happy to. Thanks to our department faculty members for their moral support and guidance. Finally, I would like to convey my deep gratitude to all the participants from various colleges for their continuous participation and support. Once again, thank you all. Participants, thank you for your active participation and kind cooperation. Once again, I thank you all. Feedback from. Participants, kindly fill your feedback form, which is in the chat box. Share, which is in the chat box. After filling your feedback, no, no delay. Ah, okay, ma'am. It will be shared only in the WhatsApp group. Okay, ma'am. Okay. WhatsApp group only. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.